Welcome to our lecture online. We're now going to use what we've learned about barrier penetration for a radioactive element. We're going to take polonium-212, which by the way has a half-life of 0.3 microseconds. It's a very short half-life, therefore it's very, very radioactive. But we're going to try to model the uh, attempt of the particle, in this case an alpha particle, of leaving the nucleus. And so it has to go through what we call a potential barrier. And we know that the potential barrier at its peak has a, a magnitude of 26.4 MAVs. And we know that the alpha particle has an energy of, and where did it go? Ah, right here, 8.78 million electron volts. So the difference between the two is about 17.62 million electron volts. So what we're going to try to do here is calculate the probability of an alpha particle breaking through that potential barrier. Now, we have to keep in mind that the potential barrier is not, in reality, a square barrier. It kind of drops off like this exponentially. But let's first model it as if it was a square barrier. And we know that the distance of the barrier is about 17.9 femtometers. Now again, it's not going to have the same magnitude all throughout. Again, we're going to model it. So using that, we're calculating the alpha value, and the alpha value, now be careful, don't confuse this symbol here with that symbol, because the alpha particle, of course, has the same symbol as we have for the alpha here, which is a part of the exponent where we're trying to calculate the transmission coefficient, which is also the probability of the particle making it through the barrier. So we take two times the mass, which is four times the mass of a proton, because an alpha particle has two protons and two neutrons, times the difference in the energy in, in million electron volts, times the conversion from electron volts to joules, and divide by h bar, which is h divided by 2 pi. When we do that, we get an alpha of 1.84 times 10 to the 15th. To make this simple, we just got rid of the, uh, the factor in front of it, so we just have to find the 2 alpha L, and then raise that to the, the negative exponent of E, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's find the 2 alpha L. So 2 alpha L is going to be equal to 2 times alpha, which is 1.84 times 10 to the 15th. And then the distance is going to be 17.9 femtometers, 17.9 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. And so that's the 2 alpha L value. So it gives us 2 times 1.84 e to the 15th times 17.9 e to the 15th uh, uh, minus. And that gives us 65.87. So that's equal to 65.87. Notice that's a huge number. If we now try to find the transmission coefficient, t is approximately equal to e to the minus. 65.87. It's going to be a very small probability, so put the negative in front of that, and that gives us 2.47. So that's 2.47 times 10 to the minus 29. So that's a very, very, very tiny probability of a particle making it through. Now, however, we've got to keep in mind that this is a very unstable nucleus. And an alpha particle will try to break through the barrier 1.1 times 10 to the 21 times per second. So if this is the probability that every time it tries it, it's going to break through, and that's the number of tries per second, we can then figure out the number of particles that will break through per second. So the number of particles per second is going to be equal to t multiplied times the frequency, the probability, times the number of times it tries. So when we do that, we have to multiply 2.47 times 10 to the minus 29 and multiply times the frequency of 1.1 times 10 to the 21st. So when we do that, we get the number of particles per second, number of particles, in this case alpha particles per second that will break through to be equal to, let's see here, we multiply that times 1.1 e to the 21. And it's not very many particles, that's about 2.7 times 10 to the minus 8 particles per second. 
If we now take the inverse of that, we get the number of particles or the number of seconds per particle, the number of seconds between particles making it through the barrier. So we take the inverse of that, 1 over the number, and that's going to be equal to, let's take the inverse, well, let's see here and convert it to that. That's about 3.7 times 10 to the 6th seconds between particles breaking through. Hmm. That means the half-life is about half of that. So the half-life is approximately one half of one over that number. So we take about half of that, which gives us about 1.5 times 10 to the sixth uh, seconds for the half-life of polonium-212. Now that's what we've calculated, but to observe half-life is much, much smaller than that, 0.3 microsecond. So why the enormous difference between what we're observing and what we're calculating if we calculate it by using what we've learned so far. The reason why we're off by so much is because we had assumed that the barrier was a square barrier, but the barrier isn't a square barrier. The barrier drops off rather quickly, and therefore the alpha would decrease quite a bit as the particle tries to make it through the barrier. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to calculate this again, but instead we're going to divide the barrier up into small sections and calculate the probability of making it through each section, then multiply all those probabilities together to see if we get much closer to the half-life of the alpha particle trying to escape polonium-212. At least this is how we would do it if the barrier was square. Now we realize the barrier isn't square, so I have a special technique to figure out how to come up with a reasonable model for alpha decay in polonium-212 using a subsection. What we're going to do is, is divide the barrier up into small sections and calculate the probability through each section, and that's how it should be done. So stay tuned and we'll show you how that's done in the next video.